Hey guys, this week we are creating this cute chubby giraffe cake. First we are preparing the board. You want two cake drums, one slightly smaller than the other. I think this was roughly a 16 inch board and a 15 inch board. Apply hot glue to the top of the smaller board and then flip it over to stick it to the underside of the larger board. This just creates a deeper base to hold the dowel. Now I've taken a drum that's the same size as my cake which I think was a 7 inch round and a wooden dowel which I've just held up and cut to the rough height of where I want the head. It's always done by eye. With a pencil, mark on your drum where the giraffe's neck will go and then choose a drill bit that's ever so slightly smaller than your dowel. So here it's a 12mm dowel and I'm using a 10mm drill bit. This is because your cake drum is made up of mushed card and the hole needs to be a nice snug fit. Here I've started the hole off and now I'm raising it onto bowls so I don't go through my worktop. You don't want to go all the way through, just as deep as you can. Now add hot glue inside the hole and hammer your dowel down into it making sure it's as straight as you can get it. Then add some hot glue around the base of the dowel. As the body contains more than enough cake for their numbers, the head can be a polystyrene ball. No need to make it more difficult. I have a cupboard full of these in various sizes because they always come in handy. Take the same drill bit and very gently go down into the centre of the ball. Do it very slowly because it can get messy. Hot glue can actually melt polystyrene, so add it to the stick first. This will start to cool quite quickly, so as you slide the ball over it, it should be just hot enough to stick it, but not hot enough to melt it. Push up any glue that remains once it's cool enough to do so. To cover the dowel, you can use bubble tea straws. I'm just cutting one up the centre and wrapping it around. As you can see, it's not quite wide enough, so you can just add another one onto the open area and continue up covering the whole stick. To cover the hot glue at the base, I've just got an oval shape from a thin piece of cake card and then I'm going to cut a slit and a hole wide enough to fit around the dowel. You can just slide it into place and stick it down underneath with more hot glue so it doesn't move or lift. Then cover all around the base with chocolate ganache and cut slits in your cakes to fit them around the dowel. Add your fillings of choice and keep stacking until you're around four cake layers high. You do not want to leave this gap open. Open air is what causes your cakes to go stale or bad. Just like bread, they need to be fully sealed to last longer. You can either put buttercream or ganache inside. Start carving your cake into the chubby body of the giraffe. I'm just slimming down the sides and cutting in to round out the bottom. Here you want to really push your filling deep down inside the hole to make sure it's all fully sealed up. Make sure you keep all your cake cutoffs and bits of cake from where you've levelled them. Pop it into a bowl and then add a dollop of buttercream and a dollop of ganache. Start mixing all this together with a spatula. Yes, I know it doesn't look the best, but it's just cake pop mix which tastes pretty good. Add ganache to the base of the neck and your dowel and start adding your mixture shaping it upwards to make the neck and smoothing it all out with a knife to meet the body. The ganache in the mixture will help it set a little firmer. Now we have a basic shape, you can give the whole thing a rough coat of chocolate ganache. Once that sets, add a second coat and start to smooth it out with an acetate smoother which will bend to the contours of the curves. Once it's all set, dampen the ganache and then add your yellow sugar paste. 
There is no real way to doing this. As you can see, I just make this whole thing up as I go along, slowly easing it out around the neck and down the front. Just keep trimming where it meets. There is a lot of smoothing and trimming involved and all I can do is let you watch it and see how I did it, which is probably not the best way, but it was a hot day and I just needed to get it on. The best homemade smoother for curves is actually a lump of sugar paste. The head is a little trickier. You want to cover the polystyrene ball in piping gel. And then here you see me faffing about with various seams. Once that nightmare job is completed, cover the board using the toilet seat method. But don't do what I did here and just randomly chop off a massive piece of sugar paste that I actually needed. It is now way too short, but luckily we can fix it by patching in a piece and then texturing the whole board in grass so no one will ever know. I had no idea what I was thinking. There are other tutorials on my channel for the cake how to make ganache and want to properly cover the board, all linked in the description box below. The legs are made by rolling a really big chunky sausage of paste and tapering one end a little larger than the other. Cut out a brown disc the same size as the larger end of the leg. Place it on top and then roll it between your hands to make it more uniformed. Stick two legs at the front of the giraffe and two behind. Now if you're left with any seams on your giraffe, it's a good time to cover them up with lots of brown splodges. Cover your whole giraffe apart from the face area and make sure to stick slightly smaller blobs on the giraffe's legs. These were all just hand cut randomly. Taking a piece of pale brown, add a large chunky oval to the head and press in holes for nostrils and a cute little smile with a Dresden tool. I've added my muzzle on at an angle so it looks like he's tilting his head slightly. You'll want to do the same with the cocktail sticks to support his ears and Aussie corns. Yes, those little nobbles on its head and yes, I totally had to look that up. Apparently they are to aid in fighting, but why use those when you have a six foot neck? Anyway, the details are all made from sugar paste and simply stuck to the head with water. The tail is a small yellow sausage with some chocolate brown paste teased into a little tuft of hair. The eyes are done with tapered pieces of black paste stuck on either side of the muzzle with a little bit curled up at the end for eyelashes. Almost there, now we want to fill in any gaps around the front of the face with small brown spodges. Taking more of the dark brown, an additional option is to create little spiky hair tufts. And we're done! A super cute, chubby, smiley giraffe, which you can easily turn into a duck or a swan. This cake was actually for one of my YouTube viewers called Becky. Hi Becky! She was turning 30 and her final cake also included her crested gecko, some Harry Potter elements of the glasses and the Gryffindor scarf. I hope you had a great birthday. Thanks for watching and sticking around and leave me a comment below on what extras you'd add to your giraffe. Thanks guys, see you next week!